You know what? I'm just going to say it. The CPC version is unquestionably superior, preserving all of the arcade original features. And if it weren't for the little screen, you'd be forgiven for mistakenly thinking it was the arcade original. So it's a fantastic breakout game with a plethora of complex features. Thank you, Ocean Software. Barbarian is by far one of the finest battles you can have on an 8-bit. And the Amstrad CPC version is no exception. And it's the Amstrad version that is the most attractive, particularly in terms of scenery. So unless you have a weak stomach, it is time to sharpen your sword once more. And all this because the lady loves Milk Tray. What a fabulous game. Probably one of my favourite on the Amstrad CPC, without question. Looks nothing like Bruce Lee, but he moves like him. And don't quote me on this, but I'm told that this is the definitive 8-bit version. Better than the Commodore 64. Yes, better than the ZX Spectrum. The only thing missing is the 1-inch punch. Ikari Warriors was the first game that made the Amstrad CPC an essential purchase. This is the second. All of the little elements from the coin-up are included, such as the helicopter directing you and the car's engine sound that alternates when you approach a tunnel. So driving and violence all in one game, what more could you want? In terms of platform and ladders games, this one is a treat. And my two daughters find it hilarious. Back in the day, it was the game that everybody owned. And I've searched, but nobody has a bad word to say about it. But the proof is in the pudding. Decades later, I'm still playing it and my kids love it. A thoroughly enjoyable game on your Amstrad CPC. Get to the chopper! Do it now! Commando is difficult, but it may just be the greatest home conversion of the game available on a classic 8-bit system. I mean, it's not the most visually appealing game, but it's undeniably one of the best run and gun games for the Amstrad CPC. A true conversion. Now quick, hurry up, rush to the next area. Unpopular opinion, but this is my favourite Dizzy game. But don't get me wrong, I loved quite a lot of the Dizzy games, but this was finished in mode zero. And I preferred the arcade feel. Of course, the Commodore Amiga version is the best platform to play this on, especially when you see the size of the genie. So, the same old Dizzy, and as Paul Daniels used to say, that's magic! <laughs> Budget games don't get much better than this. It's a fantastic arcade adventure in which the player controls one of two dueling wizards and must dash around collecting materials for spells to cast to the other. This was just $1.99 from memory and back in the day I thought this was a fantastic steal and one of the best 8-bit games ever. If you're tired of gauntlet, you're tired of life. <laughs> It works best with two players since the element of cooperation brings the game that extra life. It's also really cool as a one player game, though considerably more difficult. And the graphics are modest but nicely crafted. And there's so many levels to choose from, you'll never get bored of them. I did warn you, these are my personal favourites. And this could be a nostalgia that's compromised my better judgement. I just have fantastic memories of playing this game. And I think this was my first ever experience at playing a shooter map. There's several levels of varying difficulty and you can even up the speed of the game. Fabulous memories. Everyone talks about Get Dexter on the Amstrad CPC, but I preferred the original Night Law and better still, Head Over Heels. Now I'll go so far as to say that Head Over Heels on the Amstrad CPC is better than on the ZX Spectrum. There you go, I've said it. I still think that this is one of the best fighting games I've ever played. And yes, the Commodore 64 is the lead platform, but why do I play the Commodore 64 version and always wanna come back to this? Gimmicks aside, this for me holds its own against the 64 and I still play it even today. Without question, this is my favorite arcade racing game on the Amstrad CPC. It doesn't look great, but it's got the detail. And more importantly, 
the speed. When it came to racing games, I think the Amstrad had the edge. Don't get me wrong, Super Hang On on the ZX Spectrum was fantastic. And I really loved Turbo on the C64 and Turbo Outrun. I think Continental Circus was another favourite of mine. I'm a massive sucker for Joe Blade. I really liked the series, including a game called Prison Riot. Now the first game was absolutely brilliant in my personal humble opinion, but it was the third game that went back to its roots and it was even bigger and better. So I personally think that Joe Blade 1 and 3 are underrated on the Amstrad. Everybody in my family used to play this game. My uncle used to even bunk off work to play it and I'd go to school, come back and he'd still be there. And for a while, I couldn't get the music out of my head. My dad, my sisters, my mum, my aunties, my uncles, cousins, you name it, everybody played Oh Mummy. Back in the day, I personally believed that this was as arcade perfect as you could get on an Amstrad. We got full colour, 16 colours on screen at once, in the wonderful Mode Zero. It was not only the best of the 8-bit conversions, it was also the fastest. For me, the only downside of this game is that it lacked a two-player option. For me, probably one of the best arcade conversions on the Amstrad. It's almost arcade perfect, and it plays just like the original. It writes all the wrongs of Bubble Bobble, but you know what? I even liked that Firebird arcade conversion because it had two player and it was still fun and it was no slouch either. I played this originally on the ZX Spectrum and I absolutely loved it. So when I finally played the Amstrad CPC version, I had a proper heads gone moment. I went into meltdown. It was that good. I'm not gonna lie, I did prefer the controls on the ZX Spectrum, but after a while, I did get used to the Amstrad CPC controls, but both conversions are a work of art. I absolutely loved Rick Dangerous, the original, but I think this, Rick Dangerous 2, is probably the best game on the Amstrad CPC. It's definitely one of my favorites, and it's one I used to play all the time. It's more of the same from the original, only this time more eye candy and less frustration, but it's still dangerous. Ocean Software should be really proud of themselves because this is a fantastic game on 8-bit formats. You've got digitized images, speech, superb presentation, and all the additional elements that elevate it much beyond just being a very fine game. And get this, listen closely, the Amstrad CPC is the best version. Known as Roland on the ropes on the Amstrad CPC. For everybody else, you'll know this as Fred. The action is somewhat tricky without being particularly difficult, but finding your way out of the mazes is quite challenging. The visuals and the sound are adequate, but not up to the standards found in later games on the CPC. Furthermore, the greater the skill level you select, the tougher the game. The Amstrad version of the original was nothing short of fantastic. And Target Renegade continues that tradition wonderfully. With enormous colourful sprites and addictive gameplay, you've got the multi-storey parking garage, the street at night, the park, the shopping centre, and last but not least, Mr Big's pub. And then there's the haunting music that plays throughout. Epic. Ah, oh, thrust from Firebird. I must have put about 2,000 hours into this as a kid. And it's one that you can easily pick up and still play today. It's immense fun and it takes the lunar lander and asteroids to a whole new level. I think Geometry Wars and lots of other games, including Super Stardust, borrow from this game. And it was just $1.99 for all this. Don't ask me why, but Who Dares Wins 2 is one of my favourite games on the Amstrad. On the Commodore 64, this game scrolls, on the Amstrad it doesn't, and I've played both versions until the cows come home. And it's just my humble opinion but the Amstrad CPC is highly playable, just as addictive as the C64 version, but with a different style on play. For me, this is not just a fighting game. This, for me, is like a Salvador Dali. It's a work of art. It does everything possible within the confines of 64K, and although it won't take long until you finally meet up and beat Blues, 
You'll have had a good time in doing so. And like a good bar or a club, you'll want to go back every now and again. I'm not sure if it's just me, but I get the feeling that Avenger is massively underrated on the Amstrad CPC. It's a fantastic game and the levels are huge. The programmers really put the effort in, there's a nice scroll, and they've used Mode Zero to good effect. Don't get me wrong, I like the original, and this is completely different, but that was a specky port, and at times it was like wading through treacle. I'm not afraid to admit it, but Freddy Hardist is one of my favourite games on the Amstrad CPC of all time. I loved it, my cousins and I just couldn't get enough of it, and it's another one that's massively underrated and never gets the limelight. The facts are, the more you play it, the better you get at it, and the bigger and better the challenge becomes. I once thought about naming our dog, Freddy, as like Freddy, he's always happy. I know what you're thinking, what the hell is a football game doing in a top list? Well, it's my own personal list, as I've stated before, and I still play this every now and again, on and off. I prefer it to FIFA. Yes, Sensible Soccer still remains number one, and I love the new CPC Soccer as well. But Emlyn Hughes International Soccer had everything. You're not singing anymore. Now this is elite, I did want it to be my number one, but as you'll see, doing a personal top list is nigh on impossible. And that's the same for all the 8-bits really. Hundreds of great games. The beauty of elite is that it really is up to you. I felt like I was part of a community that grew up around it, and it didn't matter what computer you owned. The mission was to become elite. Right on, Commander. I think to put any other game at number one would be YouTube career limiting. But to be honest, no other game ever got close to this. It was a true labor of love and it was available on the Amstrad a whole two years above the other eight bits. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment. Until next time, bye.